Hey, hello, um, hi guys. So this is kind of a new experiment that I'm going to be doing. Um, if it goes well, I will post it to YouTube. Um, otherwise, you'll never see this. So I'm just talking to myself for a little while. Um, normally, I'd have this all set up before I start recording, but I'm going to set up and talk through it, I think, as I go and just see how it turns out. So, the my palette, and I've got some water. Um, and I've also got a candle, which I feel like would be cute for just now, because that's the mood that I'm in, to be honest. Let's try not to burn my fingers with that. Okay. If my very unesthetic matches out of the way, what else do I need? I need some paper. So let's find some little oh, paintbrushes would help too. Watercolor paper. It's very crackly. But I keep this one. Just like one sheet. One sheet does plenty. Um, put it back in there. Without out the way. Um, I need to be more vertical, I think. Yeah, so I have a reference image that I found. I'm not sure where it is. Let me see if... Um, no, it's just, it's from Pinterest, but it doesn't appear to see, to say, or it's from, I, I found it on Pinterest, but it's from Tumblr because that's how the internet works now. Um, yeah, so I just thought it was really cute. It's kind of like, I'll pop a picture. I'll put a picture up. Um, it's, it's um, like a landscape with some pretty clouds and trees and a river and it's very um, cottagecore, I'm going to say. Well, that's what I searched on Pinterest for a landscape to paint today. I'm going to get my pencil and some brushes out. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is my very cute new um, pencil slash paintbrush wrap slash roll as in you can roll it up but I fold it into thirds because it fits better in my pouch um, and then these are my most used favorite watercolor oops watercolor paint brushes um, they're all Winsor and Newton but they're different um, models I don't know if paint brushes have models uh, <laughs> Yeah, so these ones are really, really tiny ones, and then they just go up. Um, these ones, there's a flat round, a flat one, and a round one, different sizes. These were longer, like, I don't remember how long. Um, probably like the same length as that, so a good bit longer. Um, but they weren't very portable for me, and I wanted it to all fit nicely together in my pouch that I keep with my planner slash journal slash where I store my brain um, so I just sawed the ends like got a saw from the shed and sawed the ends off and then um, I dipped them in um, some PVA glue just to seal it again because obviously it's just raw wood otherwise 
um, and now they fit perfectly and I've made them all the same height as my, pe my, pen my pens a little bit smaller than my pens that I use, my ink drawing pens um, just for the sake of making my life easier and making everything fit a lot nicer in um, my pencil case so I'm um, also, I need some, what do I need? I need some tape, some tape, and then I'm going to do my usual um, tape the edges off so that I can have a nice crisp border because I really enjoy that. Um, it means I can be as messy as I want with the actual painting, but then it'll still be looking um, professional because it'll have a nice crisp border. And this is, um, I don't know what this is, it's just like packing tape or masking tape of some kind. There's a dog hair attached to it there, lovely. Um, but I just take some of the sticky off by like sticking it on my desk a couple of times so that it doesn't, I mean it still does rip the paper a lot of the time, but not as bad. So I'm just going to go for, I want quite a lot of paper left, so I'm going to go for about half. This is quite thick tape and I don't want to take this to the desk. <laughs> don't do that. So I normally cut out a lot of these parts of my paint with me. Um, it's not, I mean I'm doing this deliberately further up on my desk so that you can see on the camera but it's not very interesting to just see that like, there's nothing going on on the screen otherwise. Um, so I cut them out usually when I'm editing my plan with me is even though they are still real time. I don't know if that is a hair. Lovely. Um, I don't know if that counts as still technically being real time. I call it real time, so I guess it does. Um, it just it's real time without the boring nothing on screen moments. So. I guess. <laughs> the thing um, that's held me back from doing anything like this before, I mean, I don't know, I'd have to look back um, in my, I'd have to look back in my YouTube posts of my videos. Um, I might have done something somewhat chatty before, but it's, I struggle with confidence and I feel like I just have nothing interesting to say. You know, all of the people that, are, I mean, I watch like a lot of planner videos on YouTube and like people that do plan with me's instead of paint with me's. And I watch a lot of paint with me's as well. And people always seem to have so much to say and I just don't leave that interesting of a life. I have quite a small life, I would say. I don't know if that's the right descriptor. Um, I like being just cosy and doing my own thing and usually um, my partner is somewhere in the background doing his own thing too and that's Mostly why we get along, because we do our own things, but usually in the same room. Um, so I think I might actually I line that up for the camera properly, and then I'll move accordingly, because that will be easier than trying to <laughs> move my camera. Um, I'm aware that there's a hair. There it is. I think I've got it now. Because... When you want a long hair collie, his hair gets in everything, no matter what you do. Like, literally, no matter what you do. There is hair in absolutely everything that I own. Um, so, the... I'm going to put this lamp on as well, actually. Warm light. I like warm light. Um, it's still quite bright. Um, it's quite cloudy today, though, so it's quite good lighting but my desk is obviously not, well I don't know if it's obvious to you, <laughs> it's not underneath the window, it's quite far 
um, it's on the opposite side of the room essentially. And because this is just a picture that I found on Pinterest, I mean a lot of my reference images come from Pinterest admittedly, but um, Just going to roughly sketch in this bit of outline that I need. Is that straight line? Let me see. It goes a little bit up here. Yeah, so there we go. Um, just to help me with painting because Getting straight horizon lines is not always um, my specialty, I'm not going to lie. So, sorry for the noise here, I'm just going to dig around in my um, draw where I store gouache paint. <laughs> that was a clunky way of saying it. Um, so the first colour I'm going to, what I usually do for um, choosing the colours is kind of work my way down unless there is an obvious focus point but with landscapes I kind of work my way down the image um so the sky starts with like some this is sky blue these are Arteza gouache color paints I don't have the box anymore I took the contents out of the box and store them in my draw so it's easier for me to access quicker um, I need to take my palette down, otherwise it'll just slide around. There we go. So this is, uh, <coughs> pardon me, this is Sky Blue A154, and I'm just gonna start at the top here. I probably need a good bit of that. And then I need some, hmm, I definitely need white, because you always need white. This is titanium white, A101. I did usually used to use, I mean, I can't even tell you what that is called. It's just plain white. It just says white A163. So I did used to use that, but obviously it's very empty now. <laughs> I will have to order more because if, I don't know if this is a, just a me art thing, or if it's multiple people, uh, painters especially. Um, white just never goes as far <laughs> as all the other colours. Um, so I will probably need quite a bit of that as well, because there's a lot of clouds. And then I'm going to do another chunk there, just to keep it clean for any white highlights at the end. And then um, I'll need some, sorry about the noise, I'll need some grey A132. Um, this, yeah, I'll need some grey for the clouds, the shadows. See, this is um, maybe going to challenge me a little bit, I think. Oops. This is why I don't normally open them in front of the camera because the tops have like dry paint and it crumbles everywhere. Um, yeah, so, I'm, I, so I don't know if I've um, mentioned it, I guess. Um, I study, uh, this is Light Apricot, A135. Are they all A numbers? Yeah. wonder what that's about. Um, I am a part-time student as well as doing this um, art business that I have created. Um, I need some warm yellow. This is Med Yellow A121. Um, Okay, it's really hard for me to keep my train of thought going whilst I'm doing this, but also it's kind of boring just to name paint colour and then put it out. Um, a little bit of 
Mm, no, I don't think I need that color actually. Um. greens. Let's go for some greenies. Um, oh, there we go. The lead was tight on that one. So I run and develop this business over here. Um, kind of part-time and then the other part of my time I am a student. Um, this is actually my second time um, getting a degree at uni. Um, the first time I was in person at uni and my mental health did not survive accordingly. Um, so I had to take a bit of time away and then I love that vibrant green. Oh, I've stopped saying what they were. This was uh, this one is sap green A164. If I can get the lid back on, even. Um, it's a bit of stuff. Um, and then this one here was viridian, the viridian green A136. And then this darker one over here was Deep Green A158. And I've got crumbs all over my page again. Um, do I need any other colours? Um, I feel like I might need a darker, like a black maybe a dark brown. There isn't really any browns in it, but browns are good for shading. So I'll maybe just put a drop of black there because there's quite a lot of contrast in the... Sorry. In the um, trees. So what was I even saying? <sighs> this is so frustrating losing my thought trains. Um, yeah. So I work at my art business part time and I study part time. And the first few months of this year were quite full on in terms of uni work, which meant that I didn't have enough. What am I looking for right now? I don't need anything to do. Um, this is my very grotty paint rag. <laughs> I'm sure everyone has one of these. Um, so I, this is a flat brush. Um, oh, what was I even saying? This is going to take some, I guess, practice to develop as a skill to um, talk and do things at the same time, which I'm not all that good at, to be quite honest. Um, I'm just going to go in with the, I don't remember what that was, sky blue was it? I'm just going to put some down at the top here where the sky shows through the clouds and then very carefully take a chunk of the white there and mix the two. Um, yeah, so the start of this year was very full on in terms of like coursework and um, assignments and just getting through everything, which uh, inevitably means that I don't have as much mental space. I mean, I could still force myself, but it's not fun then. And I don't want to make it, I don't want to make my art practice not be fun anymore, because then I wouldn't want to do it ever, even though it is my job. Um, I need water, where's my... 
This is um like a perfume refill spray bottle. It's just got a screw top there. Um, but I just they're like ten, I think ten ten milliliters. Um, I got a packet of like five or six or something from Amazon. Fill it with water and then it helps activate the paint when it starts drying out. So a little pro tip there. <laughs> it's a pro tip if it's just from me. Um, yeah. So I don't like to force my art because then it's not. It it feels not authentic to me when I force it. Um, so I haven't been doing any painting. I didn't have the mental space to do any painting for a long time. Um, honestly, couldn't tell you when the last time I did any was before May. <laughs> I started painting again and drawing it and just being more, having more space and time to be more creative, which was lovely. It was so nice to be able to do that. Um, and I really enjoyed getting back into it. Um, but as, <laughs> I don't know if this is something other uh, RE kind of people struggle with. So if, if you haven't practiced your skill for a while, it feels like you've lost it, even though it takes like a handful of drawings or paintings or creations to get back into it. It feels like you've lost it in some way and it's quite hard to not be disappointed with that um, and I struggled a lot. I felt quite anxious about my first painting coming back into painting and drawing after not doing it for so long. Um, but as my partner so lovingly slash mockingly reminded me, any skill, no matter how talented you are in it, requires practice and if you haven't practiced it for a while it's going to be a little bit rough coming back and that is okay and you just have to think of the first few paintings as practices until you find your feet again, really. So that's what I did, or tried to. But because of taking such a big break, I don't know if it's a skill I had before, I can't remember. I'm not very good with the old memory box, um, as in <clears throat> as in my brain, but um, I have been struggling with painting reflections in water. I don't know why it is, but I mean obviously this reference image is a, has a reflection of the sky in the water, um, so it's going to challenge me a little bit I think. But we're just going to take it slow and gentle and we're going to see how it goes. That was a really long-winded way of getting to my fucking point and I've just won. Ah, <sighs> okay. We're just going to pretend I didn't do that. <laughs> because I'm not sure what YouTube's rules are for... I'll do the reflection later. I can. Um, I'm not sure what YouTube's rules are regarding swear words, but I'm gonna guess they're not very Scottish friendly. So, <laughs> um, we'll see. I might have to bleep that if I can figure out how to. Um, yeah, One of the main thing that has held me back from doing chatty, I guess, kind of videos is that I just don't feel like I have anything to talk about. And um, you kind of have to have something to talk about when you're doing a chatty video. <laughs> yeah, that seems quite an obvious thing to say, doesn't it? Um, I 
Yeah. I'm gonna actually go in with the yellow up here as well because it is reflected on the clouds. Even though the clouds themselves obviously aren't yellow, but I guess they are somewhat yellow in this image. And that obviously there's many trees up there. Just went down that far. And there's trees on this side as well, so I'll just go like that. quite hard to think of something to say. Maybe I should have written like talking points or something. Um, let's get a little bit of white. Very diluted and just use that to blend these two. There's actually quite a spine there so I can't tell but oh well. It's easier to paint the background completely sometimes. Um, I have to be careful here because if you put too much water on it does pull up the paint underneath. Which is um, quite tricky to manage with gouache. I'm going to take some of the water out of the brush there. But this whole, well not this, this is I guess going to be a standalone, maybe the start of a different format. Oh, I don't like that. Okay, I'm just going to let the, the water and paint dry on that bit before I do anything else. Because um, it's just pulling the paint up. But he dog hair. I don't think I can get that out painted on there. There we go. Um I'm going to start making some clouds with quite a pale grey here and then it's going to go, that one's mostly white and then there's one on top of it here that is the grey, it's very like, almost fake looking with the cotton wool look. Uh, we're just gonna blob it down. Is that art terminology? I don't know. Um. <coughs> oh, my throat. And some water. So today's Thursday, um, which means that my partner is in Glasgow today, which is why it's so... Should I do that first? Yeah, I should do that first. Um, which means it's quiet and I can do this without too much background noise. I say as I hear a truck going past our house. Um, but hopefully it's not picking up. I'm gonna get some more white. And then go here. Fluffy clouds. And more paint. More paint. 
and cover a harsh line there. Um, yeah, so I have the whole day to myself on a Thursday. I try not to schedule anything either so that I can literally just have an entire day to myself. It's like, I don't know, is it like an introverted thing or just a self-care thing? Um, because I love making plans to go and see people and do things, but there's something so luxurious about having a day to yourself. had a bit of an odd day today. Not really the day itself, just in terms of my own head. Um, I do find it quite hard to manage my brain sometimes. Um, and this morning, so my normal kind of daily routine that I, for the summer months, I've been trying to stick to. Um, we get up and we take the dog out for a walk first thing and then we come back and we have breakfast and then start working um, and because my partner starts at nine that's usually a pretty good time to have to arrange everything around it's quite handy it's quite handy because obviously I have nothing that's time based unless I'm at uni and I'm not current well it's all online classes but you still have to attend them um, and I'm not currently at uni because it's the summer holidays which means that it is handy to have my partner's work schedule be keeping us on track I guess um, yeah, our usual routine, we get up and take the dog out, have breakfast, and then I start working. And I normally work until lunchtime, which my partner's lunch break is at one, so it makes quite a nice morning. And I can focus my brain better in the mornings. Um, it's not impossible later on, but it's just more probable that I'll be able to focus in the morning. Um, so I try to, like when I've got uni, I'll do that in the morning instead. Um, but I'm able, I'm not like, kind of just giving myself more time and space to be at the moment and it's really really nice um but today i well this morning i woke up really early about four from a quite a bad nightmare pardon me um and i can get back to sleep and So whenever I don't sleep properly or enough or just have disturbed sleep, um, my mood and energy obviously suffer very quickly. Um, so this morning I it took a lot of effort, I guess, to convince myself to take the dog out, um, especially because it's Thursday, so my partner's in Glasgow all day and it's uh, just me to take the dog out, which I don't mind, I love a walk, we love going and having a wee wander together, but it just means like I have to talk myself into it a bit more, but it's not always like that, it's just if I've had not great sleep 
then I have to talk myself into doing things. I sound really weird. Like, that doesn't seem like it's a normal thing people struggle with. I guess this is just gonna be in the words of Megan Rhiannon on YouTube, my silly little YouTube channel. Um, and I'm just gonna talk about whatever I want to because I need to have confidence in myself and stop letting my brain tell me that my that I'm not interesting. I, I don't feel like I'm interesting really, but it's it's different. Um and that what I have to say is important. I mean not on a grand scale, I guess, but um I don't need to silence myself, which is something that I struggle to remind myself a lot of the time is that I am allowed to have a voice as well and I'm allowed to be interested in things that maybe they are corny or cringy or whatever word should be used to describe. but. I'm allowed to have my own interests and I'm allowed to have my own voice and I guess that's just a big part of trauma recovery um, even though I'm not in therapy anymore that was a big part of the therapy that I was doing when I was having therapy and um, yeah so Holding myself back from doing this sort of a format of video because I didn't have anything interesting to say um, was just me silencing myself and I need to not do that because it's not healthy, like <laughs> that's not healthy at all and this is just my silly little YouTube channel where I paint and draw and show my art, um, my silly little drawings and my silly little paintings. Um, and sometimes people like them. And that's okay. Wow, I got deep real fucking quick, didn't I? Oh, there I go swearing again. I got teeth real quick, didn't I? Um, yeah, so I'm just using the long edge of the brush, like the, the flat front edge. I don't know how this, this bit, um, but the point, the, the corner, um, to create this kind of like these lined shading underneath the shadows, um, well, the, the shading underneath the clouds, um, just how it is in the picture as much as I can. Um, and then blending that with the water that I've got in the brush up a little bit. I need to get some more. And then I'm doing the same underneath this cloud because it's also down here. I'm just trying to form a brush in there. It's so odd to talk this whole process out because I feel like so much of my art and creative process is so intuitive and trying to explain it or put it into words is really difficult. Um, I guess uh, it's just what it is but so I've got too much water on my brush that time but if I clean it off 
and dry the water out. Then I can just use my brush dry-ish and spread that paint. And then I'll come back in with a stronger layer later. But I'm going to, I mean I've got clouds on top of this, but where I've I mean this side looks okay. It looks kind of accurate to the picture, but this side, the yellow and the blue um, didn't blend as nicely as I would have liked, and it's kind of more green, which is not a sky colour. Like, I don't know, if, apart from like the northern lights, if you know, <laughs> there's not a green sky colour. Um, but I've got some clouds sitting over the top of it. So I guess I can get away with it if I just wait. Gotta be patient and let the paint itself dry. But then I could... I'm just going to take this palest sky colour with some water. So this is just the blue and white that I mixed earlier. I'm going to Start putting, so this is like the, the foreground of the picture, and then the reflection of the river is just above this. So there's bits of sky coming in here, and then over here as well. So I'm just going to put that down to kind of block in some more colour elsewhere in the picture while I wait for it to dry. I do tend to just work on the sky first and then the rest after, but I need these colours later anyway so I might as well use them. Um, yeah, so there's some blue, just go straight across there, like that. And I kind of need a little bit darker, yeah, um, but not all over. I hope I'm talking loud enough because I'm kind of muttering. Um, I'm just going to blend those two. Like so. Okay. And then this. There's tiny, I can see in the reflection, I'm sitting sideways, <laughs> um, there's a tiny bit of water there still. So I'm just going to leave that for a little bit more, but I'm going to go back to the clouds now. I'm going to use just the darker grey shade. And it needs to go over the blue, so I need quite a bit of the actual paint on my brush as well, but I don't want so much water because then it won't look so fluffy. So I'm going to dry some of the water out of my brush, which is how it gets so mucky on my towel. <coughs> um, and then there's a cloud across here. So this morning, like I was saying, it took me a while to get out with the dog. So it's kind of taken me a while to just do anything today. Um, and it's really frustrating having days like this, but I just have to kind of roll with it. Um, I need a paler. I don't know how people keep their palettes and their paint so clean and separate. <laughs> I just mush everything together at the end. Um, yeah, it's been taking me a while to get going today. Um, which is quite frustrating, really. 
but I took the dog out. I went past the pharmacy, picked up my prescription. She's been sitting there for a few days because I had something on my to-do list and keeps getting moved to the next day. Um, and then we went down along the burn, which was nice. All of the hawthorn blossoms are out at the moment and it, the air is like really, I don't thick. <laughs> Can you describe air as being thick? Um, and it's not really, I don't know if that it is accurately like that or if it's like my hay fever is making it feel that way. Um, but the hawthorn blossoms were making, they were, they were very heavy in the air um, while we walked along. But it was nice, they, was, they smell so good. I'm so excited for the elderflower to come out. That's probably one of my favourites. I don't really know why. Um, but the hawthorns are really pretty too. I try and just notice these things while I'm walking. It's like a... Um, need some more. It's like a mindfulness thing. I just try and notice the world around me because I can get so wrapped up in my own thoughts a lot of the time. Um, saying that, I was listening to the um, Akatar audiobook while I was walking. Um, the Sarah J Mass, The Court of Thorns and Roses, the first book um, that I was reading, that I was listening, reading, listening to. Um, I'm not really sure. I finished it this morning. I've been listening to it for a while, because I don't know. Um, it didn't really make it clear. I don't think which is classic Amazon, but um, on audio, aud audible, audio, <laughs> yeah, audio, audible. It was. The first book was like the dramatized version, um, because I just like re listen to suggested things, I guess. Um, and the dramatized version was split into two parts, so then I had to wait a month between finishing the first part and getting a credit from Audible to listen to the second part, which was really annoying. Um, so I finished it today. I'm not really sure how I feel about it, to be honest. It was... I don't... I guess I'm not really sure if I read that kind of genre much. It felt kind of... I mean, there was a lot more of the character. Um, like, the female character, but it still felt kind of Twilight, but fairies instead of vampires. I don't know if that's fair or if that's me... Um, that's just my feeling from it. Uh, maybe it's not a fair feeling, but that's... Yeah. I mean, it was fun. It's entertainment, really. It, I don't... Um, I didn't expect it to be anything more than that. But it was still... It was... I've seen a lot of hype online, I guess, for it. Um, I'm... And my, yeah, my sister-in-law, she reads a lot and she's read the whole series and she said the second book is where it gets better. So maybe I'll just get the second one and hopefully, I'm not, I don't think, I think I'll try and avoid getting the dramatised version because um, then hopefully it'll all be in one book on Audible because that was so mean having to wait halfway through the story. Like, <laughs> that was unnecessary. Audible. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to wash out some of the more pigment of the colour so that I can just use the same because I want to put more of a wash on this yellow cloud here. It's still quite dark though, so I'm going to rinse my brush out. Pardon me. Um, dry it off a touch and then 
Just use the moist. <laughs> Sorry, everyone who hates that word. Um, to blend it out a little bit more. <clears throat> and then this cloud over here needs some darker shading. So we're going to come flat, flat brush, flatten it. And we're going to come back and do some darker shading down here. Um, and then this goes down and touch over here. Goes so nice and fluffy. And some more under the sides as well. And this is kind of like I don't know what this is. Like upright clouds. That can't be right. Maybe it's just a big do clouds go upright? Maybe it's just a big um fluffy one, but where the sun is hitting it makes it look like it's going up. More shading. I'm so embarrassing. I think I've run out of things to talk about. That did not last long. I used to be able to just talk and talk when I was younger. I feel... I don't know. Maybe I've just got less to say. I feel a bit anxious today actually. I'm going camping this weekend. Um, well, on Sunday. For a few nights. So does that count as weekend? I'm calling it weekend. Um, and I haven't been camping in so long. Um, I don't know, I just feel really anxious about it because I'm like, what if I get it wrong? I don't, I'm not sure you can get camping wrong, but I have this perpetual, I don't know, maybe it's too deep to talk about this sort of thing. Maybe it's um, too deep to talk about this sort of thing on YouTube. I guess other people would. <laughs> Probably a bit much for a first one though. Mm -hmm. White. <sighs> Been doing this for a while now and like an hour, I think. I don't know, I'm not the best judge of time. But I just want to keep going at my own pace and try and just enjoy myself. Pardon me. And relax a little bit. I don't know if that even looks white. We have to come back and do some more. It doesn't, it's like grey. I just want... Oh, I don't know what I've done. That was where I blended out the colour. I just want white, so I'll just take it from here. That's more like it.
<coughs> Pardon me. I've had a very nasty cold that I'm still getting over. But it's also now hay fever season, so they're kind of merging into just a lengthy episode of um, sneezy coffee-ness. <laughs> it's real attractive, that, isn't it? Not sure if these clouds are going how I had hoped. Maybe I need to change my paintbrush to a smaller round one. But maybe just keep going like with the white highlights for now and then I'll come back afterwards with the colours on a smaller round brush that might work better. The clouds are so annoying because sometimes the shadows are on the top and sometimes they're on the bottom. Sometimes it's not very obvious either. You have to really practice looking. I guess that's all art is, isn't it? Practicing looking. I watched a really cute um, bullet journal video earlier. When I say earlier, it literally means it could have been 20 minutes ago, it could have been four weeks ago. Um, I have absolutely no concept of time. But I watched a very cute, I want to say it was like yesterday or today. It was like a bullet journal video and she was painting. It's like, um, kind of Chinese-Japanese garden with a, a crane scene. And it was really cute. I mean, I don't really do the whole bullet journaling thing anymore. I'm more of a stalogy girl now, but um, it was really cute. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna leave the clouds like that for now. I'm going to actually put in some of these what colour is that? It's just grey, isn't it? I'm going to put in some of the shadows, or not shadows, reflections that are in the water though. Um, just to make my life easier while well, there's nothing to paint around. on my brush anymore. So, hmm, feels a bit redundant to ask how is everyone, maybe. How are you all, if you ever, anyone ever actually watches this? How are you? Tell me in the comments and I will chat with you. Is that how social media works? Wow, I feel like such an old person. Is this how the interwebs work? <sighs> yeah. It's really hard to keep up with everything. I don't know how people do it. Like, maybe I'm just prematurely old. I just feel like everyone else seems to... Just know how everything works. Like, how do, how do people do that? How do people just know how everything works? So I'm going to take some of this, but I'm actually going to clean off my brush and then mix some, not very white anymore, white, <laughs> um, to make this cute 
pastel kind of color. Isn't that a cute color? I used to love this color. I mean, it's still cute. It's just not my. More of a. Mm, like a pastel olive green. I, would, I like that shade more. That's, um, if you could hear that, that is my feet cracking. Like I said, prematurely old. I'm just going to put this all along here. For this little bit of background of the river. A little bit of a straight line. It looks kind of like it's foggy. I'm going to leave that to dry for a minute. Because, um, the paint will sit there. And then I'm going to do these really bright bits of green because they're very easy to pick out. Maybe a bit too bright. I'm going to mix a little bit of this. Darker green with it. That's better. I'm really not sure what the audio quality is going to be like on this. I probably just have to keep telling myself to stop muttering, to be honest, but we'll see. Um, so I'm going to do. I'm just going to block out the shapes really because that's the main thing at this point in the painting of the foreground. I've got some tree edge up here. And this is like a nice bank on the river over here. And then there's more bushy foreground fore blah, foreground grass. <laughs> That's hard to get out. Um, so I'm just going to bring that all the way down. Not being very neat about that, am I? Too much. There we go. And it's quite a bit darker in the middle there, though. I'm just going to go like this. And I'll fix the edging afterwards. So I think I'm gonna have to bring the river further down. But I'll see once I get the this side of the painting up as well. So it's um, not, it's only just 5pm right now, but I had my dinner two hours ago because it was cheesy pasta and it was in the fridge and it was calling to me and I didn't eat massive, I, didn't, I had like one open sandwich for lunch which isn't really much. Um, and I was hungry because I'd had a big walk with my boy. Um, is this all... Ah, uh, these are reflections. Okay, so the actual bank is up here. And then that's reflection. Okay, okay. I see what's going on. I see what's going on. So this is the other bank and then some more treeage up here. And then darker tree in the background, but I'll just put this one in. Smoosh the paint around there like a maniac. Okay. Um, I'm gonna use the darker. I think I might actually swap my brushes now. I'll kind of put in the main chunks of shape so it's kind of more mm, I'm going to use this 
kind of medium of what I have. It's still quite small. It's a one. It says one on it. I don't know if that means anything wrong. LOL! Hmm, I'm gonna start with this foggy shaded background first. And then I'm gonna come back to the foreground. So we've got this is a darker line along the bottom here. And then some trees coming up over here. So I'm just dabbing, but like not in a cool way. Is dabbing ever cool? <laughs> Uh, I make myself laugh. I think I'm just laughing at my own awkwardness from there. So this brush is mm, not great, I'm not gonna lie. It's not my favourite, but it works. It does the job that I needed to do, mostly. So. I'm just gonna, it's kind of like dotting the brush down, like stippling is it called? Um, so it just goes along here into the shadow over there and then this is a paler piece but it's got blended like so. And then this bit over here as well is like a line of trees and then goes up the hill here and joins on to this one. And there's some that are a tiny bit taller but most of them are the same. And it's blended together because it's all foggy and spooky. Spooky. There we go, and then I'm going to put a tiny bit of darker. I have to wait till the paint dries. I just get as much of the pigment. I can. And then I'm gonna just follow the shading for this tree line, which goes along like this. And act a little bit there, along the rubber bank, and then up this tree line as well. Some happy little trees. Are they like bushes? That's what grows on river banks. There's a lot of trees that grow on river banks too. There we go. So it's obviously slight. I think if I'm looking very closely at the picture, I think there might be a building around here, but I don't feel like drawing it, so I'm not going to. Um, I'm going to focus on the dark shading of the foreground there. I'm going to use this, whatever the darkest green was called. I'm really good at making tutorials. <laughs> I've never done them. <laughs> um, so yeah, this tree here. I'm going to go along up until the spooky foggy bit. I might need to blend that now. And blend that out a little bit more. And 
I'm going to go. And then I'm going to back with this dark green. I don't know what it was, Brodian. And then this tree just goes up from behind of this one. And goes up over here a little bit. And we're going to do some more dabbly dotty stippling kind of movements. Such professional, much wow. So I'm still mostly just blocking in the shapes here. But I also, this is not going to be easy to go over again afterwards, like the outline of these. Um, especially because it's against the sky here. So I'm going to do my best to make it look good on the first try. Sorry if you can hear screaming in the background there. There is obviously one of my neighbour's children. Is not very happy. Or very happy. It's really hard to tell with kids. They scream all the time, don't they? No, that sounds like crying. Poor thing. And then this is actually a good bit taller, so... Do I want to do it now, or... I might make this one a little bit more feathered on the edge here. I think I might wait until later and do with a smaller teeny tiny brush. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's getting the shape right though. There we go. <coughs> and then on this side of the bank where am I going? over here and it's the same kind of shading underneath the trees there and then the darker trees coming up I wonder what kind of trees these are they look deciduous that doesn't really say much. Mm. I might need to get a smaller brush. And there's a lot more of the light shade on this one. It's not a completely dark one. But the back one here is. So we're going to do that. And then there's some more. This is where I struggle, or I start to struggle, because there's reflection. So I guess I just paint the reflection the same colour, because that's the colour that it is. If I stop thinking of it as a reflection and just start thinking of it as another part of the painting, then it would be this colour, wouldn't it? So I just block in the colour here. because that's where it is. <clears throat> Some real progress going on in this. <laughs> I don't know if it's progress. There's some sort of um, learning that I'm doing, I'm telling you. And so the shadow of this one is kind of similar to the shape of the top that above it. And then this is more of a triangle here. And not quite so sharp though. And then there's a line across here. Which I'm not sure if it's um reflection or like a grass 
bank coming out, like a, a point of the river, or a point of the land jutting into the river, but I'll just draw it in and see. And then this needs to come over more because I don't want to paint this. There's a gap of my paint there. I'm just going to bring this further over. And that's how painting nature works. Because you can't tell that it looks wrong unless you look at the reference image. <laughs> and then there's a um, shadow underneath this bank. There's another layer there. That's all of it. And then this shadow and this tree. Like this. And then the reflection part underneath is mostly really dark shaded. So if I just paint it down. Like this. Obviously, I've still got to paint the kind of sunsetty colours into the reflection. Don't forget that point. Um, no, we'll just keep going like this and see how far we get. I might have to stop painting the river bank in a minute. And finish the reflections of the water from the sky first, um, just to make my life easier with the highlights, or not highlights, but like the foreground interest. And then. crack. <laughs> um, this part is also shaded a lot more. But obviously this is the foreground so it's going to have a, a lot more detail put over the top of this. It's just to get the colours right underneath. And over here and there. There we go. those bits to dry for a little bit and I'm gonna go back to the clouds I think and spray it with a bit of water just to reactivate that those pink colors that I've used before um, and I need some I'll start with white just to make my life easier here and here and there <sighs> so Tell me what creative things you guys are working on, whoever's watching this. Um, it's always interesting to see what people are doing creatively. And what, um, if you're doing like a long-term project or anything. As I have been... For way longer than the 30 days that is advertised, I've been working on a landscape painting project in my little sketchbook, um, which I started in order to get more, I guess, acquainted with gouache um, as a medium, because I'd never used it before. Um, so it was quite fun, actually, to kind of learn, I guess, is the right word. Um, 
but obviously all mediums work differently and interact with themselves. Is that a weird way of phrasing it? Probably. It, like watercolour versus acrylic is what I was using before. Um, they're obviously two very different uh, mediums of paint. Um, and it was just interesting to learn a new one that I hadn't encountered before. I'm not sure where I first heard of it, to be honest, because it was so long ago now. It was perhaps like Mini Small's YouTube channel. Um, I know she works with, or I don't know what she's doing, to be honest. Um, she used to work with gouache in a lot of the videos that I've seen of hers. Also, if anyone has any good recommendations for channels to watch that are art-based, um, I'd really appreciate if you left them in the comments so that I can go check them out. Um, I want to... I guess it's um, kind of thinking aloud here. It's quite therapeutic, actually. Look at my uh, train thoughts crashing into each other like I'm mad there. Um, <laughs> I one of the things um, with being so heavily self-taught as an artist is you don't have the formal training. Um, unless you seek it out and I don't know if it's just me but I find it really hard to know where to seek it out or where to find ways to develop my practice and I'd also really like to learn more about like art history or just other artists work um, as well I think that would be really cool um, I feel like people think that I know a lot more about art than I do. It's kind of, I don't know, I feel awkward about it because I don't actually know that much. But that's how you learn more, isn't it? Admitting that you don't know much and then seeking your information. But one of the things with being a self-taught artist is that it's kind of hard to know where to find the information. <coughs> Pardon me. So, yeah, if anyone has any suggestions of good YouTube channels that are... I guess ones that um, like if it went into specifically art history, like movements of art, styles of art, um, different artists and their work, things like that, that would be fun. I do try, um, obviously because I'm a Scottish artist, There's too much water on my paintbrush. Because um, I'm a Scottish artist and I'm based in Scotland um, and I'm a Scottish person. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm so weird. Um, I do try and find Scottish artists. Um, the I don't know, it's, especially when you start looking into like formal history books or art history books and things like that, like textbooks or official kind of things that would be used for classes or something. A lot of the artists that come up are very much from other parts of the world. And I... I get that, like, art is a big thing <laughs> in every community and culture. It's how we 
share ideas and messages and tell the world that we have a voice. Um, but the only kind of large scale, I guess, is like that I know of Scottish art is like the Glasgow Boys and Charles Rennie Mackintosh and those kind of movements. I feel like there isn't as much. There's a lot more focus on English artists or like French artists or Greek or Roman sort of motifs, you know? I don't know if I'm even making sense anymore. It's, maybe it is just me, and um, maybe I do just need to find more of it and introduce myself to more of it. But I guess I'd have to learn about the uh, prominent art movements in other places in order to put the ones in Scotland into context. Which I do find very interesting. I'm actually... I'm not studying um, art history, but I'm studying Scottish history and uh, culture and heritage which is very fascinating as a subject or as, a, as two subjects because it's a joint degree Where did this cloud go? It's over here Yeah, maybe that's what I can do with my summer is just find more learn more put it in my commonplace journal How freaking cute are those clouds? I need yellows now, but they're looking adorable. So fluffy. They're so fluffy! You can hear my dog wandering around downstairs. <laughs> he was in the kitchen because he, got, he was swimming in the burn. And then... Um, He's not let out of the kitchen until he's dried off, so he must have dried off. He's quite good at self-regulating that. I guess we must have taught him in some way, but we don't really know how. <laughs> but generally he'll stay on the back doormat in the kitchen um, and on his towel until he's dried off and then he'll wander back through and come say hi So I'm just putting like tiny, tiny highlights onto these clouds of the pink and the yellow because those are the main colours that I'm seeing from the sunset that's being cast up onto the clouds. Um, but it is quite hard to make it... Um, look natural and not like I've just plonked it there. Or maybe that was just me overthinking it. It's 
So these ones are more pink and then these ones are more yellow. And then I'm also going to carry this yellow color down here where it's reflecting in the water. Up here too, and the same with the pink. Cause it is just a yeah, so just in here. actually run out of things to wa waffle about now. I'm not sure how long this painting is going to be. I'm getting a bit stiff and I'd like to go. But I told myself I'd do a painting today. Since it was nice and quiet while my partner's out. So I'm going to do my damn painting. Sometimes you just have to tell yourself to do the thing. So there's also ripples in the water that I will need to consider. Let me know if anyone, um, let me know if any of you have painted along with me or painted this separately. Um, that'd be cool. Share pictures as well, that would be really cool of what you painted, if you painted this. I'm not really sure. It doesn't I don't think it counts. I don't think it counts as a tutorial. But I am kind of talking through what I'm doing. But yeah. Um, where the ripples are. This. I need to smooth out this entire area, it's not blended very well at all. I think it needs more paint as well, like pigment. this flat round one for a little while just so I can blend all of these colours into each other a little bit more. Um, I think that will help it look more like actual water and not just another sky. Careful not to pick up any bloody green. See, this is the problem when you just throw colours down. Where 
Where is the green one? Hmm. Um, yeah, so I need more of the gray down here. If I turn it so I'm using the flatter edge, it will look more like ripply water. So then I can come back in with the actual greens as well in the corners here. I guess this is like a wet on wet technique that you'd use with watercolour. I don't know if it's a standard practice to use it with gouache, but we're, we're, we're doing it. Being very careful not to pick up greens. Then I need some more blue in here. More blue. More blue. Too dark. No, that seems fine. Pick out the blue parts in here. And then I need more darker grey in here. Use that again because I didn't wash my brush and there it is a grey pink, but that's fine. Throw it down over here. Some more up here. Yeah. Oh, it's not looking pink anymore. Because I'm diluting the paint down a lot, I can use it kind of more like a watercolour with this wet on wet technique, which is what I really enjoy about gouache actually, is that it's um, like a halfway between acrylic and watercolour paints but it's also kind of a bit of both and I really enjoy that so it needs mm, do a little bit more over there mm, do a little bit of yellows and here I can hopefully not pick up any of that green as I do this either. But I'll also need to remember and do the greens into the actual river texture as well. Pardon me. I haven't drunk water in a while. Have a drink of water, lads. <clears throat> I feel like it's looking a bit muddy now that I've stopped and taken a breath, but 
We're going to keep going and then I can pick it out as well with some like white highlights, which I mean that always fixes everything, doesn't it? Yeah. So now I'm going to do the darker river texture, which is this dark green color. We'll start up here. It does come out from there. And then those are reeds, so maybe I should leave those. So I'm using my smaller brush again. And then this over here is I definitely shouldn't have got that out so far, but well. It's just shadow. It's a shadow, darling. Mm. Pardon me. I burped, and also my neighbor's taking their bins in, so. It's uh, not thunder, it's, it's bins, in case anyone was worried. And this is the big old tree. It comes out quite a way actually. I just haven't finished the uh, tree itself, so put the reflection of it coming up here. How does that look? It doesn't look awful. I mean, it doesn't look amazing either, but I'm gonna round this edge here. It's a bit better, isn't it? And also do it. I mean, we can't. This is not technically a river, but it will help blend the edge of my foreground. So, I guess we're winging it. <laughs> like usual. This is all foreground and the grass reaches over so. And then what I can actually do while I'm here, I've got the darker colour on this brush because once it gets a little bit drier, it sticks out a little bit. And then I can do the little reeds down here. Makes my life easier to paint them like this. I'll have to fix it obviously so it doesn't look quite so clunky, but it helps to give texture really quickly. That all looks like it's weedy to me. And then Also helps if you dab the brush, it forces it into the spikes, which you can then use. <laughs> Not like that. Or water, maybe. We'll try that. There we go. 
They're quite big chunks of grass, so I'm not too worried because it's it's still going to be covered with more texture. But we'll just uh, help me blend this harsh edge here into the river more effectively as well. And it starts looking more grassy as well, which is always nice. I think I might do the same along this edge too. This front bit here is quite a bit darker. And then in here as well as the tree. The top of the grass. And this tree comes down a bit further. Um, if I get the right brush, there we go. We'll go back to the smaller one. So I think it is starting to get there. Not much to go, I don't think. It's amazing how um, it all comes together, isn't it? Yeah. Pardon me. That was a hiccup. These two greens make more of a medium dark green. Try a bit off then. you're all enjoying this or I hope whoever three people watch this are enjoying this. This one's for you guys. I'm enjoying myself now. I kind of relaxed into it. Which usually happens after a little while. It gets kind of meditative, which I really enjoy about painting. It's probably one of the things that drew me into it in the first place, was just how calming and relaxing it can be. I kind of yeah, because it's so intuitive for me, it stops me thinking. I don't do a lot of conscious, like, obviously I'm kind of thinking about what I'm going to do, but it's not conscious the same way a lot of my thoughts are. It's more... this is what I'm doing and I don't really second guess myself as much which is really nice I think I might need to make some white highlighted yeah it's not going to show up very well because it's quite a bit paler along this cute little riverbank here in there. So, um, just take it from here. A little bit white. Tiny 
tiny bit on the outermost of these branches too. This is like my ideal place. I'm such a forest goblin, but I do love watching the water as well. My dog is actually obsessed with the water. Which is, it's quite funny to me actually because he was terrified of the water when we first got him. We kind of had to teach him how to swim as well. But now, if he ever disappears when we're on a walk or a hike somewhere, we're I mean, well, the regular places too, but somewhere that we're unfamiliar with. I just find the nearest water, like body of water, and he's there almost every single time. Actually, every single time so far. He's a very happy boy now. I think he's just snoozing. Probably hoping I don't go and catch him on the sofa. Quite bushy, this little guy. And then this is more tree, I think. It sticks out a fair bit more. And it gets darker towards the top because there's more contrast with the light. Um, I think this thing needs some. Where's my brush shape? Mm -hmm. This thing needs some more highlighting as well. Just like that. That's enough. No, add a bit more water to it so it's. Um, I don't know what you would you describe it as like. Just more watery paint, um, but it makes it easier to do little brush strokes like grass, which is what this little. Over here is, and then more bigger ones over here. I can see the yeah. I actually like the looped ones as well. I'll do a variety. There's actually flowers down here as well, so I think I might include those just for a bit more interest in the front but we'll keep on with the grass for a little bit first oh this is turning out so cute <clears throat> we need to add a bit more into the reflection there yeah that's there and then also here Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There we go. So the more watery 
obviously not too much, but to a point. The more watery the paint, the easier it is to drag and make nice, sharp little strokes, which obviously symbolise the grass. And I'm just going to do it layer by layer, still taking my time, building up the colours. No rush for the happy little grass. Everything takes its time, doesn't it? But obviously, you have to do the strokes themselves quite fast, like, whoosh, like whooshing. Um, because otherwise they don't draw properly. I'm going to do some of the darker green. I might actually swap as well. Mm, yeah, I'm going to swap to my... I don't know, this is my smallest one. These are 000 and this one's 00. zero. So that's the smallest one to get those pop-in details. But obviously this doesn't hold as much paint. So I have to take my time. Towards the edges is the brighter green. So I just put these down. Like this. And I'm going to do some darkest as well to build up that texture. Some happy little grass blowing in the breeze.
Um, I'm also going to mix a touch of the black into the darkest green. Um, for some real dark shadowing. which is mostly in the metal and towards the water. It's a bit thick. And I'm also going to use this to finish off these big old bushy trees. Yeah, these are the bits that take the longest, all the detail work, but these are the bits that make it look the best.
this tree over here is quite a lot bigger than I originally drew it. I don't know if you can hear my stomach gargling. It's not very ASMR, is it? Okay, um, just finish off this tree. I think it needs some of the darker shading though. contrast a little bit. Another neighbor with their bin. Um, I'm going to paint in the wee flowers, I think, which are mostly white. And then I'll do the highlight. Maybe I should do the highlight grass first. Hmm. first. My camera's going to run out of battery soon. Let's see if we can get this finished before that happens. It's very hard doing this movement, like, away from me. Well, the thing with grass as well is that 
It has like individual strands that stand out, but it also grows in clumps. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. It's quite a clumpy creature. If you've not got enough water in the paint, then it does this. I don't know what you call it, like, it just goes dry, I guess. I think that looks pretty good, and then with the flowers on top, that look good. So the flowers are white. They're they look like cow parsley to me. Um, so we're just gonna do. Don't want it to be like too bright a white though. We're mixing a bit of this yellow. That's better. Like a whitey, creamy color. Now I'm just going to do little dots of hats. Dotty Hatties. Pardon me. They're like little umbrella shaped flowers. And then there's some up over here as well. But they're a little bit further away, so they're not quite as well defined. Dotties. And a bigger one down here. And I'm not really being super accurate about where I'm placing these. But I wasn't super accurate with where I was placing the grass either. Because it's not really like photorealism, it's like. You know what it is. <laughs> if I knew more about art movements, I'd be able to tell you too. But it is what it is. This is looking really cute actually. Is that um not very modest of me, is it? <laughs> I'm just really enjoying this one. I feel quite awkward to start with because I'm not really used to I mean, I guess I do just talk to myself sometimes. <laughs> My partner would say a lot of the time, but I don't do it consciously. And this is quite a conscious talking to myself, really. So, yeah. I'm just going to keep painting little umbrella flowers until I feel like there's enough. Quite a big cluster of them over here. I think what I might also do with this colour is like the there's a little shock of highlight right underneath here. Is not going very straight, but it's, it's close enough. And then there's a couple of ripples as well.
See, like I said, it's the little details that pull the painting together at the end. Okay, I think I'm going to do a little tiny one in there. And then I think I'm going to declare that done. Because I don't want to do too much. Like, doing too much is the worst. You can always do more. But if you do too much, you can do less, you know? So I'm going to like highlight these with just a shocking shocking pure white to give them a bit more dimension and I'm still just dabbing like dots with the paintbrush because the thing about painting nature is for landscape scenes you only really have to suggest what things are and the human brain because we've evolved so closely with nature for so long, it fills in the gaps for you. And that's why you don't always have to paint things photorealistically, especially now that cameras exist. Because you don't need to. It's the same way that, um, have you ever seen those like bodies of text where the first and the last letter are right but all the letters in the middle are in the wrong order but you can still read it it's uh it's just your brain it fills in the gaps it knows what things should look like even if it doesn't necessarily actually look like that and that's one of the things that's one of the things i love about painting nature is that you don't actually have to get it 100% accurate, you know? As long as it looks close enough, then you're golden. Oh, I'll just put my hand in that. I've got a green hand now. that I'm missing. There's a water drop over there. What's that all about? That's not the ground. See if I can blend that in a bit. There we go. I'm also going to blend this stroke of river in there as well. And I think I'm going to do a bit of the darker Shading as a couple of strokes of. Yeah, that looks good. I think I'm going to declare that done. Um, yeah, I don't. I think I'm done. We'll just peel off the tape. See, this is why I love the tape because you always get nice crispy edges. Look at that. It just makes it look so much more finished than if I oops, if I just left it how it was, you know? There's a nice dog hair again. So let me move that a bit. There we go. 
for a finished painting. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone who watched this far. Um, leave me a, what should we say, leave me a little tree if you actually made it this far in my video here. I know it was quite long and rambly and um, maybe um, leave some pointers of things I could talk about if this was something that people would be interested in listening to me ramble for I don't know how long. Um, yeah, so thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video and it's wonky again now. <laughs> there we go. This is my cute little cottage core river scene gouache paint with me. So bye!